Let's go. Can't remember what I'm talking about. We're doing it anyway. Hello, everyone. How have you been doing today? I'm going to talk about some- why am I still holding my pen? I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna talk about magic as an LGBT symbol in the series of BBC Merlin because I love that series. Then I'm gonna tell you why. Just- just- just a word, just a thing that's gonna happen. I'm gonna use the word queer. Um, I know it's a contentious term but I'm using it because A it's faster and B some of the stuff I'm gonna be delving into is queer theory which is an academic way of viewing fiction or books or movies etc. So that is why I'm using the word. So with that in mind so if you haven't watched the show BBC Merlin, <laughs> first of all go watch it, second of all how did how did you find this channel? This guy, it's called Merlin, fortunately he's got magic in this kingdom where magic is outlawed, it's socially seen as something that's evil and not to be talked about. Is that sounding a bit familiar to you? In fact, even if this metaphor isn't being driven hard enough, here are some of the many similarities between the way that magic is treated in this show to the way that LGBT plus people are treated in our world. So, for example, number one, both queerness and magic is something that you cannot physically see on the person. Number two, both queerness and magic is something that people were born with and not something that they have chosen. Number three, queerness and magic is something that higher powers have both tried to eradicate from the society or from their system. Number four, queerness and magic is something that historically has been prosecuted against, shamed, and people who have and or are it often face lots of discrimination, both verbal, physical, and otherwise. And if that's still not enough, the character of Merlin himself, the head of magic, the strongest warlock that there ever has been in the kingdom, is also queer coded. Now the general idea of queer coding is whereby writers or directors or any creatives like that use physical signs or actions of characters to portray them as or suggest them as being queer. Obviously this theory cannot be put into practice in real life because you cannot look at someone and say, yep, they're gay. But it's definitely something that in film and in TV and in books you can look at as a means of figuring out or reading into characters. So the character of Merlin, again these are all stereotypes but because of queer coding in fiction there's a parallel to them. He is more feminine, more slight than the other knights. He's constantly being called a girl by Arthur, which is on the one hand just a way of Arthur trying to insult Merlin, but also it can be read as queer coded. There are at least a few jokes uh, with Merlin uh, cross-dressing as a girl throughout the show. Number one, when he steals the dress for Freya and Arthur tells him, you know, whatever a man does in his spare time is totally up to him. And number two, when Merlin dresses as an old woman, and he doesn't seem to mind that at all. So there's definitely more feminine traits which Merlin could be associated with, which again in turn through queer coding can be read as being gay or bisexual. Gotta get the bias in there. So with this all being said, what is the point? Why is it so important to me? And why is it so important to read shows like Merlin as being queer coded? One of the many key reasons why this is important is because of that good old word that's shouted out a lot in this channel representation. So a lot of the time through fiction we will explore themes that are present in our reality. So for example Harry Potter looking for pure bloods and stuff can be a metaphor for race purity and Nazism and racism and everything to do with that. I mean let's not mention the irony of the fact that even though that is a metaphor for racial discrimination etc etc there are like no people of colour in the entire Harry Potter universe but that's that's another argument for another day. And in the case of Merlin, as we've been discussing, the whole storyline with magic and wanting magic to not be outlawed anymore can be read as a metaphor for gay rights or LGBT people. And because it is fantasy, it allows the viewer, no matter their viewpoints on a certain topic, to observe something and to hopefully be on the side of the protagonists. In this case, be on the side of the people who, in this instance, being read as being queer. We side with the characters of Mullen, we side with the characters of the Druid, even though Uther is a complex character, we disagree with his views on magic and we urge Arthur to agree with Merlin and side with Merlin in letting magic 
no longer be outlawed. So when you have groups of people, especially in a family show, in a family situation, watching the storyline and sympathizing with these characters, you are teaching people inadvertently how to be more accepting of these groups of marginalized people, which is obviously really important and is a really clever way of getting people to understand your point of view. After all, story is one of the most useful and one of the most effective ways of encouraging or persuading people to see a different point of view. Also, another reason why this is important to view as a queer or a marginalized representation. As I said before, it's a family show and that means that queer kids, they will be watching a positive depiction of what they have been going through. The character of Merlin, he is a good person, he is a good character and he is the most powerful warlock, read the gayest gay that ever there was. I think I've said before how when watching Merlin and when I started realizing that I was queer in some way, I had already done a lot of the heavy emotional lifting through the character of Merlin watching that show. So for example, the bit when he talks to Gillian, he says how it's lonely being you know, the most powerful person and no one can ever know about it and about how magic isn't a choice and that it's not evil. All of these things are so important for queer kids to hear. And so through doing it in a fantasy context, it gives queer kids a safe space in order to explore these themes without being in danger essentially. And that is why overall doing queer readings of shows and why reading characters is queer and why generally doing this sort of theory is really important. There's a desire as human beings to relate to other people and to find connection with other people. And if you just read the explicitly queer characters as being queer, that is not a very high number of characters that queer people and queer kids can relate to. However, when you view things like Merlin as an example of queer fiction, it allows people to find connection with things that they haven't been able to find connection with before. It is important because finding connections is important. We, we are sociable creatures generally, most of, most of the time we're, we're sociable creatures. But my point is, we want to find connections and everyone should have the chance to find those connections, whether through real life or whether through fiction. That was my thesis. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Everyone in Merlin is gay. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I certainly did. And if you want me to talk more about Merlin, give this video a like. And comment down below what your favorite part of Merlin was because was, oh, all that hurts. Comment down below what your favorite part of Merlin was because I love it too. I love it. Also, please, link in the description below. I'm so professional. Give uh, my videos with Hissy Fit some love, please. I dump pasta over myself in a bath. Quality content. Um, I hope you guys really enjoy it. I will see you soon. Bye.